Hello everyone, welcome back to the Literacy Volunteers of Harrison County YouTube channel. We would like to welcome you and we would like to thank you for clicking on this page. Please share these videos with your friends and like them, give them a thumbs up and maybe talk about them so that we can get the word out about these videos that we're doing. They're a great educational resource. Today we're going to look at Math Lesson 5 and it's on dividing fractions. We've looked at fractions in general, just a general definition and what they are. We looked at adding fractions, subtracting fractions, and multiplying fractions. So the last video on fractions is going to be on dividing them. So how do we divide fractions? There's only one way to divide fractions. The easy and the most common way that everybody learns that's taught is called to invert and multiply, right? We're going to invert and multiply. Well, what does that mean? Let's look at the three steps. Step number one, we want to invert the fraction we are dividing by. So when we look at this expression here without this, we have four-fifths divided by two-thirds. So you want to make sure that you are inverting the correct fraction. It's the one we are dividing by. So all we do is move the four-fifths over here, but when we say invert, we mean to flip it over, right? So instead of two-thirds, we're going to change it to three halves or three over two and then multiply. That's step one. We want to invert the fraction we are dividing by. Let's look at step number two. Once we finish doing that, we want to multiply the numerators and the denominators just like we did when we multiplied fractions. So we have four fifths times three over two. Four times three is 12, right? And five times two is 10. So we have 12 tenths. So then the step three, which it always is, is to simplify if necessary. So this one we can change into a mixed number, right? 12 tenths is equal to one and two tenths, but we can also reduce that down to one and one fifth. This would be our final answer, right? Okay, let's look at just a couple other short examples. This, in this example, number one, we're going to use a whole number divided by a fraction. So if you remember when we did the multiplication, we have to put our whole number over one. So we have three over one, we want to multiply by the inverted form of this one, right? So we have to flip it over, so our four is now on the top and our one is on the bottom, and we can multiply. Three times four equals 12, one times one is one, and so that 12 over one is equal to 12, right? All right, let's look at example two. We're still using a whole number. Here we have three divided by three-fourths. So we put our three over one, and we're going to multiply by the inverted form of three over four. So we flip it over, and we put four over three, then we can multiply. Three times four is 12, and one times three is three. We can change this because we know that three goes into 12 evenly four times. So our final answer is four. Let's look at an example again of two, of two fractions. So example three is what is one third divided by three fourths? So let's think we have to go back to step one. Step one is to invert the fraction we're dividing by. So we have our one third, right? We invert three fourths to four thirds or four over three, then we can multiply. One times four is four, and three times three is nine. So our answer is four ninths. If we look at this, it cannot be simplified. This is the most simple um, form of this fraction, so we leave it alone. Example four, we want to know what is five sevenths divided by 10 fifteenths. So we bring our five sevenths down. We're going to invert our 10 fifteenths, flip it over. So we have 15 over 10. So when we look at this, we have five times 15 over seven times 10, but we can simplify this before we even multiply. So we're not multiplying by as large numbers. So what we look at, you can um, do this by what's called, we're gonna cross these out. See this cross multiplication? So five goes into 10 two times, and we can change this five to a one. Now it's much simpler. We can multiply one times 15 to get 15, and seven times two to get 14. Now that's an improper fraction, so we know that 14 goes into 15 once, 
with one left over. So our answer is one and one fourteenth. All right, we just have a couple more examples. This is pretty easy. Let's look at dividing mixed fractions. In this instance, we have three and one third divided by two and one half. The first thing we want to do is to change these to improper fractions, both of them. So we have three times three is nine, plus one is 10. So 10 thirds divided by two times two is four, plus one is five, five halves. Now we can invert our fraction. So we bring over our 10 thirds, we want to invert the fraction we're dividing by, so it becomes 2 fifths. So we can take 10 times 2 is 20, 3 times 5 is 15. We can make this a, a, a mixed number. 15 goes into 20 once with the remainder of 5 fifteenths. We can reduce 5 fifteenths down to 1 third. So our final answer is 1 and 1 third. Let's just look at one more example to make sure we have it. We're going to take 5 and 6 tenths and divide it by 1 and 2 sixths. So we take 5 times 10 is 50, plus 6 is 56 over 10. Then we take 1 times 6 is 6, plus 2 is 8, 8 over 6. We're dividing 56 tenths by 8 six. So this is the one we flip over. So we have our 56 tenths and now we have six eighths. We can also cross these out like we did the others to simplify it so we're not multiplying such large numbers. So we look at our 56 and eight first, and eight goes into 56 seven times, so one eight and seven up here. Then we can look at our 10 and our six, and those can both be divided by two. Two goes into six three times, two goes into 10 five times. Now we can multiply seven and three to get 21, and five and one to get five. So we have 21 fifths. How many times does five go into 21? Four with the remainder of one. So our final answer is four and one fifth. So you can see this is pretty easy when you're dividing fractions. We're just going to flip them and multiply, which is what we discussed in the last video. The next video we're going to look at is about decimals. So if you're looking to go on to learn some more about decimals, please click on our next video. And we would like to thank you for joining us for our math series on fractions.